All right, let's talk about Apple M2 Pro and M2 Max hardware. So over the past few days, I've been checking out some of their new devices. And if you compare to the M1 equivalents, there's some very obvious performance uplifts, mostly in the GPU department. That's where it's like the biggest gains. But one thing that I noticed that was quite interesting is that the 14 inch and the 16 inch are quite different in performance this year. Like the gap is a lot more noticeable this year than it was last year. So let's get into it. M2 Pro and M2 Max. If you compare them to M1 Pro and Max, M2 has a couple more CPU cores and there's options for more GPU cores. You can now cap it at 38 GPU cores instead of 32. Uh, there's options for more RAM or the ability to hold more RAM. So up to 96 gigs now can go into the 16 inch model. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi 6E support. It has a claimed longer battery life. There was one thing I noticed on like the product website the 16 inch model this year is supposed to be a little bit heavier by like, I don't know, 100 grams or so than last year's 16 inch model. But when I compared them on a scale, they were almost identical. So if there's any kind of difference in weight, it's seemingly insignificant. So this year, there's no major innovative feature. It really is focused on the new chips. So these are better in single and multi-core CPU performance if you compare them to the M1 stuff. But for most workflows, it's not gonna be some game changing leap compared to what the high end M1 chips were already offering us before. However, if you take a look at the energy consumption, there is some interesting stuff going on. At full CPU load, the M2 Max chip needs to consume more power than the M1 Max chip. It's about like a five watt difference in terms of package consumption, but that can add up. Now, these systems can easily handle that bump in wattage. The 14 inch and the 16 inch, like you could run Cinebench full blast for like eight days and it wouldn't see any decline in performance. Now, when it comes to the GPU of M2 Pro and M2 Max, this has even bigger gains. It's very impressive when you look at some benchmarks, but real world gains you get from these GPUs are gonna vary from app to app. It really depends on how the developers have utilized that technology. So some apps will get massive gains, other apps less so. Now, if you take a look at energy consumption here, at the top end, these GPUs can push about 50 watts, which is again, like, I don't know, six, maybe seven watts more than what the M1 Max could do last year. So if you have a full GPU load and you combine it with the full CPU load, that's when the 14 inch model has a tougher time. And there's the gap between what the 16 inch model can do versus the 14 inch model is much more pronounced this year compared to what the M1 devices did last year. And I think it's just because it's a bigger die. These things pull more wattage and they give you better performance, but because these chassis haven't changed in shape or size, the 16 inch with its bigger fans and just more space in there is gonna have more thermal headroom. Uh, okay, a quick note about battery life. So. The battery life is still one of the most impressive things that I find about Apple Silicon. It's so crazy what they're able to do, even with the high-end chips. So there is a noticeable improvement in battery life when it comes to running light tasks, but when it came to heavier loads, there was no real difference compared to the M1 Pro and M1 Max devices. But the M2 devices this year, they are a pretty obvious spec bump. Uh, again, not like a major innovative change. Like it does feel like Apple looked at this product line this year is like, yeah, it's a it's an eco round, right? Maybe the upcoming recession, maybe because their development cycle, they didn't want to blow too much on this year's kind of changes. Uh, but if you're looking for a GPU upgrade, it's there. I think if you're coming from older Intel hardware, this is a, I mean, it's a solid year to pick something up, but if you want something less expensive than like brand new M2 options, the M1 Pro and M1 Max options, like the refurb store, that's a solid thing to hit up now. Uh, I'll be a separate video, but if you have, like, if you're in a privileged position, you already had like some M1 Pro or M1 Max hardware, I'd skip this one. 